You've noticed that your baby chick, juvenile pullet, or adult chicken is passing watery or even bloody droppings. She's also losing weight or not gaining the expected amount of weight for her age and breed. And she appears weak, inactive, and is reluctant to eat or drink or even move. She has sunken eyes, dry skin, and reduced skin elasticity, indicating dehydration. Perhaps her feathers are ruffled and unkempt as well. And in the case of an adult hen, you've noticed a drop in egg production or poor egg quality, including thin-shelled or misshapen eggs. This is a very disturbing, heartbreaking picture, and you begin to worry and wonder, what could be causing these problems? Well, it's possible that your chicken is suffering from a very serious silent killer, a single-celled protozoan parasitic disease called coccidiosis. But this situation doesn't have to end in tragedy. There is hope. Let's explore this silent killer that strikes so many of our backyard feathered friends without warning. We'll discuss its causes, side effects, and complications if left untreated, how it's diagnosed, and the treatment and prevention. Let's start with the causes of coccidiosis. Coccidiosis is primarily spread through the ingestion of sporulated oocysts, which are resistant forms of the parasite found in contaminated feed, water, or litter. Once ingested, the oocysts release sporozoites that invade the intestinal lining of chickens, leading to the development of coccidia in various stages. You've seen the clinical signs or symptoms of coccidiosis in your chicken, all of which can vary depending on the species of Imeria involved, the age and health status of the chickens, and the severity of the infection. But the sum of it is that if your chicken shows any of those signs at all, it's a good idea to monitor her to see if she exhibits a combination of the main six signs, diarrhea, weight loss, dehydration, decreased appetite, ruffled feathers, and or decreased egg production. Of course, ruffled and unkempt feathers or decreased egg production by themselves are not necessarily a sign of coccidiosis since there could be other reasons for those conditions, making coccidiosis difficult to diagnose without the assistance of a veterinarian. But if the chicken is showing any of the symptoms mentioned, then there may be reason to take a closer look. Let's get into the details of at what stage of life chickens are most susceptible to coccidiosis, as this could also be extremely important in helping to determine if your chicken is suffering from coccidiosis or not. According to poultry experts, chickens are most susceptible to coccidiosis during their early stages of life, typically between 3 weeks and 12 weeks of age. This period is critical because young chicks' immune systems are still developing, making them more vulnerable to infections and less capable of producing a robust immune response against coccidia parasites. Here's a more specific breakdown of the susceptibility of chickens to coccidiosis based on their age. At 0 to 2 weeks old, newly hatched chicks have some degree of natural immunity passed on from the hen through the egg yolk. However, this immunity is temporary and decreases as the chicks grow older. This initial period provides a window for chicks to develop their own immune defenses. Three to six weeks old is the age range where chicks start becoming more susceptible to coccidiosis as their immune systems are still maturing. Exposure to coccidia oocysts from the environment, contaminated feed, water, or litter can lead to infections during this stage. Symptoms of coccidiosis may start to appear, such as diarrhea, weight loss, lethargy, and poor growth. 6 to 12 weeks old is the peak susceptibility stage. Chicks between 6 and 12 weeks of age are at the highest risk of developing severe coccidiosis infections. It's at this stage that chicks will be introduced to the outdoors, where they will be immediately exposed to the environment in which the coccidia oocysts live. Hence, the combination of an immature immune system, increased environmental exposure to coccidia oocysts, and even overcrowded brooding areas can contribute to outbreaks during this period. At the final stage, which is 12 weeks and older, the chicks are transitioning to the immunity stage, developing a more robust immunity against coccidia parasites. Exposure to low levels of coccidia oocysts helps stimulate the chicken's immune system to produce protective antibodies and build resistance to future infections. In fact, some poultry keepers purposely introduce coccidia oocysts at this stage by exposing them to grass and dirt for short periods each day rather than thrusting them into the environment all at once. While older chickens can still harbor coccidia and shed oocysts, they are generally more resistant to developing severe clinical diseases compared to younger, susceptible chicks. But this doesn't mean that there is no chance that the adult chickens will develop the disease. They can still contract coccidiosis and possibly die from side effects such as dehydration brought on by diarrhea, poor nutrition, or starvation from lack of appetite, digestive issues, and abnormalities within the reproductive tissues. If left untreated. Being aware of the age-related susceptibility of chickens to coccidiosis helps chicken keepers know when to implement appropriate preventive measures. For example, knowing that baby chicks are most vulnerable between the ages of three to six weeks old, we understand that this is not a good time to expose them to the coccidia parasite. So removing them straight from the brooder to the outdoors at this age presents a greater risk of contracting coccidiosis. 
Appropriate preventive measures also include maintaining clean and dry living conditions, practicing good biosecurity, providing balanced nutrition, and monitoring chicks closely. So now we come to the question of how coccidiosis is diagnosed. The best way to know if your chicken has coccidiosis is through a veterinarian because a vet can differentiate coccidiosis from other gastrointestinal diseases and ensure appropriate treatment. Veterinarians typically diagnose coccidiosis based on clinical signs, fecal examinations to detect oocysts, and in the unfortunate case of your chicken's death, through post-mortem examinations to assess intestinal lesions. However, poultry keepers who are experienced in recognizing the symptoms of coccidiosis often treat their chickens themselves. I do not recommend this for inexperienced chicken keepers because many of the symptoms of coccidiosis are similar to other poultry diseases, and you wouldn't want to treat your chickens for a disease that they don't have. Typically, though, the treatment of coccidiosis involves the use of anticoccidial drugs, which can be administered orally through the water or feed. Common anticoccidial medications include amprolium, sulfonamides such as sulfatamethoxine, taltrazuril, as well as ionophore such as menensin, salinomycin. These drugs work by inhibiting the growth and reproduction of coccidia in the chicken's intestines. While coccidiosis can be treated successfully if diagnosed in time, effective control and prevention strategies are the best practices. This begins with good hygiene practices from the very start by regularly cleaning and disinfecting your poultry housing, feeders, and waterers to reduce the spread of coccidia oocysts. Clean, dry litter materials help to minimize coccidia survival and transmission. Finally, a balanced diet with adequate levels of vitamins, minerals, and amino acids also do wonders in supporting your chicken's health and immune function. If your chicken already has contracted coccidiosis, however, the most common treatment is antibiotics. In fact, some commercial poultry operations use coccidiosis vaccines to help build immunity in chickens and reduce the impact of the disease. But there are major controversies surrounding the use of antibiotics. For example, research indicates that antibiotics negatively impact the animals and the environment, and ultimately us. How's this related to chicken keeping for the hobbyist? Some poultry keepers choose to use medicated chick feed as a preventative, which often includes additives like coccidiostats and sometimes antibiotics as well, depending on the specific needs of the flock. Commonly used coccidiostats include amprolium and ionophores because they are effective against several species of parasites that cause coccidiosis. More concerning is that antibiotics such as bacitracin and tetracyclines are also used in chick feed. What's the concern about antibiotics? Those who use medicated chick feed might not realize that the feed also contains antibiotics. The use of antibiotics in animal feed, however, is becoming increasingly regulated due to concerns about antimicrobial resistance, AMR, and the development of superbugs. Overuse or misuse of antibiotics can lead to the emergence of bacteria that are resistant to these drugs, making infections harder to treat in both animals and humans. This poses a public health risk as resistant bacteria can be transmitted through the food chain. Another concern is its environmental impact. The presence of antibiotic residues in poultry litter and manure can contribute to environmental contamination. Antibiotics can leach into soil and water systems, potentially affecting wildlife and contributing to the overall spread of antibiotic resistance in the environment. Critics also argue that the use of medications in chick feed may mask underlying health issues or contribute to a reliance on preventative treatments rather than addressing root causes such as poor management practices, overcrowding, or inadequate biosecurity measures. Regulatory changes are taking place, however. Agencies in various countries are implementing stricter guidelines and regulations regarding the use of antibiotics in animal feed. This includes restrictions on certain antibiotic classes deemed critical for human health and the requirement for veterinary oversight and prescriptions for medicated feed. For example, antibiotics such as penicillin can no longer be purchased from sources like feed supply stores, mail order, or root drivers without a prescription from a veterinarian. Furthermore, there is ongoing research and development of alternatives to traditional antibiotics and coccidiostats, such as probiotics, prebiotics, plant-based additives, and immune stimulants. These alternatives aim to reduce the reliance on medications and reduce the risks associated with antimicrobial resistance. Many chicken keepers, however, have long relied upon alternative means to keeping their flock healthy. For years, they have been taking a holistic approach to poultry health, exploring natural preventatives and remedies for all sorts of poultry ailments, including coccidiosis. While it's essential to note that natural remedies may not always be as potent or reliable as conventional medications, many poultry keepers find them beneficial when used in conjunction with good management practices and veterinary guidance, and claim to have had satisfactory results from them. Well, this concludes part one of the series on chicken disease. Be sure to watch for part two, in which we'll discuss in further detail holistic treatments of coccidiosis. Why not subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss the next video?
And it would really help the channel if you would also hit the like button and leave a positive and or helpful comment as well.